All right, making procedural materials in Blender. I, I know it can be daunting and kind of scary to learn how to do it, um, which is why I made this video today. What I wanna to showcase today is how simple and easy it is to make really effective procedural materials in Blender. And the truth is you don't need a lot of nodes to make something very useful and very effective. And the value of procedural materials is they give you that flexibility without having to use image textures, which you would have to tile. And sometimes downloading and doing all that stuff can be a little frustrating. Making them natively in Blender is super convenient. And I wanna show you today, really anybody can do it, especially beginners can do it. So in today's video, we're gonna create a galvanized steel material. And we're only gonna use five different types of nodes and different orders to actually make this. So the tutorial is gonna be kind of cut up in two stages. Stage one is really setting up the look and the shape of galvanized steel. We're gonna be looking at a reference and seeing what does Blender offer that we can use to mimic what we're seeing on this steel. And then phase two is now we're gonna see, all right, what do we need to do now to implement believability and photorealism into this? And again, the whole time focusing on keeping it simple, fewer nodes and making it effective and believable. Now, if you get to the end of this tutorial and you go, you know what? Making procedural materials is not really for me. I prefer to sculpt or model or something like that. That is completely fine. You're allowed to have your preference. And that's totally cool because there are so many libraries, um, image texture and procedural materials online that you can get that you can just apply. So don't think you have to do this. Um, I actually have an add-on myself that has 290 procedural materials that you can apply to your models with one click. You have kind of your everyday materials like stucco and asphalt and surface imperfections, all the way up to really complex stuff like cloth and carbon fiber, terrazzo and tiles and all that stuff. Uh, you can check that out, that's linked in the description. Now conveniently, Blender Market is doing a sale, 25% off, that's gonna be February 13th through 17th. Now if you're watching this tutorial after the sale, you can use the code YTMAT at checkout on Blender Market, you can get that 25% off. So I wanna allow anybody who wants to get that, you can. With that being said, let's get into the tutorial. All right, so here is the reference we're gonna be working off of. And let's start off with kind of observing what we need to do first. So what we see, um, obviously we see these shapes that are very much Voronoi looking. So we're definitely gonna be using the Voronoi texture and what we can see also, can I zoom in farther? is it's kind of gritty. It's kind of, and that is going to come from your noise texture. So what I already know we're go no, going to need to do is overlay a noise on a Voronoi. And that's going to be step two of adding the detail. But what right, right now, what we need to do is just establish metallic. We need to establish shape and let's go ahead and establish roughness. So let's go here into Blender and go ahead and knock that out. I'm going to be starting off with this model. You can use any model you want. Because it's procedural, we're not gonna be harnessing UVs. Anything goes. Um, this is a model that I use for the real-time materials stuff, so it's just convenient to grab. Uh, but use a sphere if you wanna just kinda of keep this shape going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop over here into shading, and I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna work in cycles. You can use EV. They'll look relatively similar in both, so whatever your preference is, whatever your computer can handle. We're gonna click new and it's gonna bring you a principled BSDF. This is the baseline for most of the materials I've pretty much ever made. Um, sometimes you can get weird with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the metallic slider up and now we have metal and we have our roughness slider here. So let's go ahead and establish shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit shift A right here, search. I'm gonna type in a color ramp and that's really going to crunch in whatever we're doing. Um, I'll show you how that works rather than describing it. So what we can do now is hit Shift A, search, and type in VOR and grab the Voronoi texture. Now, if you want to be making procedural materials for a while, um, I wanna make it easier on yourself, go to your edit, your preferences, and go to your add-ons and type in node and turn on the node wrangler. And what that's gonna allow you to do is to bring these necessary nodes by hitting Control T, having this Voronoi texture selected. And this guy right here is gonna tell um, basically all the shapes, how to map. And so if you want it to just be standard, use object. If you want to use the UVs or the unwrapped uh, portions of your model, you can use UV. Uh, but pretty much across the board, you wanna use object generated sometimes, but object allows you to apply this material to other things and it's gonna scale, it's going to scale uh, appropriately. So pretty much by default object, most of the stuff even in uh, the real-time materials add-on is object coordinates just because it makes it more universal. 
This guy allows you to move things around, but we're not even really gonna touch that. Um, so now let's go ahead and plug color into color ramp. And the difference between color and distance is distance creates gradients. So if I bring this in, which now you can see what the color ramp does, you can see how it has a, a smoothness to it and color is just gonna com be completely solid. So that's what we want. Now you have some pattern options. Uh, what we're gonna do is use Minkowski. And the reason why is we can take this exponent and we're gonna do 8.6. And that exponent is gonna show like how crazy you want it to be. So if I bring it back to 0.5, which is a default, see how nuts that looks? But if you bring that exponent up, it's going to smooth it out. And I found 8.6 in my original to be where I wanted it to be. And then let's just bring that scale up. And what we're already getting, if we bring up our reference, is that shape to a degree, we're getting that shape right here. So Blender already made it incredibly easy for us to get that shape going. And then what we can do is with that color, see how this color ramp is gonna show us that color. Um, you bring it in, you can make it more white. So what I'm gonna do is just bring them together a little bit so it's not quite so insane. There we go, because if we noticed, refer back to our reference, it doesn't get too dark. Like right there, that's pretty much as dark as it's going to get. And so we can kind of harness that and uh, maybe we can make it a little darker, but it'll spread it across too much. So maybe something, bring it in and bring it in. There we go, we've established shape, we've established color. Now let's go ahead and establish roughness. So we're gonna get another color ramp so that we can control everything. Um, if we don't use color ramps, what that's going to do is just, it's gonna be the wild west. It just whatever the color uh, decides, that's what you're gonna be stuck with. With a color ramp, you can now control that. And so let's just look at this really quick. If we click on the color ramp, we can see the Voronoi pattern, if we can see how this works here. Um, and so what we're gonna do is the way roughness works is the dark, the, the darker the color, the more mirror or the more shiny or glossy that's going to be, the wider, the more rough and not shiny and reflective it's going to be. So if we go back here, we can see how that transfers. And so what we can do is just bring this up to meet it. And now we have a little bit of light interacting. So if I unplug this here, we just rely on roughness. This is what we're playing. So it's gonna be a very subtle effect, but when it comes to photorealism and just making it look believable, making it look interesting, you wanna go for, towards subtlety. Those subtle bits are gonna make or break your materials. So just kind of focus on that. And just cause the effect isn't obvious, doesn't mean it's not affecting anything. So let's bring that color back. And now we have a little bit of fun here. And then I'm gonna bring this in like that. And maybe it's still too reflective. We can kind of gauge that light. But so far I think it's good. So the last thing we need to establish, which I uh, forgot to mention was bump. Because if we look um, at other, we can't really see bumpiness here, but when I was researching references, galvanized steel has a little bit of bumpiness to it. And so what we're gonna do is get a bump node plug the bump node by, uh, went too quick there, shift A, search, bump, and plug that right into the normal. And then in this case, we don't need a color ramp because when I first designed it, just didn't use it. We're gonna get a noise texture. So shift A, search, and uh, no, noise texture. And then we're gonna bring the vector here and the factor into the height. And now it's going to do that. What I'm gonna do is bring my scale to 250, bring your detail to 12. So if you wanna see how that affects it, with no detail, it's gonna look wavy. When you introduce detail, it's gonna introduce grittiness. Now remember I mentioned grit, that's gonna come from your noise texture. So if we bring that detail to 12, it's gonna establish that and, then, and the roughness is going to make it a lot more grainy and a lot more just fine tuned it. Uh, what we're gonna do now in the distance is 0.1. It's more closer to realistic um, distance here. And then bring that strength, something very, very slight. I mean, it's gonna be very, very small amount of roughness and bump that we're gonna introduce to this galvanized steel. Maybe 300 on the scale. There we go. So now we have established roughness, color, and bump as the first layer to establish this material. Now let's go into part two which is going to be adding the detail. So what do we need to add for detail? 
Let's go back to our reference here. A couple things we need to add. One thing is the, the grittiness. Notice how it's not so solid. Notice how in our material, in our material right here, you can just see the shapes. Nothing's over them. Nothing's smoothing them over. Uh, we can bring that scale up a little bit more. But again, nothing's really smoothing them over, but you notice how they're a little smoothed over in, in, in almost all of them. So we need to add something in our color to completely smooth it over, and that's gonna be where the noise texture. Last thing is, that's not so solid of an edge when you transition from one shape to the next. There's a bit of a fade. And what we can do is very easy to achieve that look. Zoom in here. So the way we can, and what I mean by that, see how hard that edge is? It's just solid. So what we can do is on F1, see on this Voronoi texture that's driving this shape, we can go to smooth F1, and now you can uh, gauge your smoothness. So what happens is if we go halfway here, it's super smooth, now it's super uh, solid. So just bring it up just a little bit so that now that shape, well, it's a little weird there, but now that shape is much smoother, much better. And you can see how this looks weird when you zoom out, it's not gonna be noticeable. So that's just a strange detail, which will be glossed over in a minute. But that smoothness is really gonna help transition from one shape to the next. See how that looks right there, and this looks here. It's just much more realistic. Now let's go ahead and find something to smooth over this shape to make it look a little less crazy. And the way we're going to do that is mixing this color ramp with another color and a noise texture. So I'm gonna highlight these and hit G to give more space. What we need to do is get a mix, go to a mix uh, color right here and plug it here and put uh, this one into the B socket. So now we have this color and I'm gonna bring it to something like this and we're gonna get a noise texture. And what we're gonna do, and in fact, I'm just gonna show you rather than explain, I'm not the greatest at explaining things, but pretty good at showing. So. So I'm gonna go ahead and get in a color ramp right here and plug that color ramp straight into the factor and we'll explain how that works here. Now let's go ahead and get a noise texture, get a vector and plug that into the vector and get the factor into the color ramp. And then let's go ahead and just crunch this in and let me show you what's happening here. So if I go ahead and preview this noise texture, we can see this. So let's go ahead and edit that detail to 12, bring that roughness up and we can crunch this in. So here's what's going to happen. The black portions are going to reveal the, uh, the Voronoi, this shape. These black portions are gonna reveal it, while the white portions are gonna reveal this color on top of that shape, which is exactly what we're seeing here. There's a shape on top of our pattern, um, gloss, um, or like smoothing it over, making it a little bit more gritty and less fake in a way. And so you, if we zoom in here, we can start to see that work. So if we bring this in, something like this, play with your color ramp, notice how there's some variation here. And if I bring this color darker, you'll see it much more obviously. Notice that, that is what we are creating. And this color ramp is gonna crunch that in. So really just play with your color ramp, but keep them centralized. So now we have some color, some variation on top of what we're already doing and notice notice the grit that it establishes. But now that we have this kind of grittiness established, I don't want it to be so obvious. So if we can take the black portion and bring it up a little bit, it's gonna smooth that out. Bring it up a little bit, it's just gonna kind of make that a little less obvious, make the effect not so strong. Now what we can do, I'm gonna bring this color up a little bit and let's go ahead and now instead of plugging the Voronoi into this, see this color ramp that's plugged into the roughness, rather than just straight up plugging that in there, let's go ahead and plug this mix into that. So now this whole new vibe can um, talk to our roughness. So now it's a little bit better and we can bring this in and make it a little bit more dramatic and say, hey, that's too reflective, that's too glossy. See that right there? See this white portion, I mean the dark portion, we can just bring it up to meet it and have it just a little bit. And there we have our material and say, hey, let's go ahead and make it a little bit more glossy and have this one follow it and have this one follow it like that. That's a little bit more glossy, looks a little bit more metallic. Um, and then you can play with your color, you can play with everything. Um, 
and then maybe we can just kind of play with these to establish that noise texture. There it is. There it is. And so see how it's like hiding, completely hiding. We can bring that color ramp back up to reveal more of it, something like this. And there we have our galvanized steel material. And there we have our galvanized steel material. And we can really just add more details too. If we want, we can get deeper, but this is more of a beginner focused video. Um, and there it is. With these nodes, we created this material. And in the grand scheme of things, not a lot of nodes. It's really, the skill in this comes from seeing a reference and trying to mimic it and match it. And that's really what we did here. Um, so you can take this and swap out nodes and make different shapes, make different materials. But what I really wanted to talk about was how simple these are really to attack. And it really comes down to being good at seeing your references and matching them and playing with your color and playing with everything. And hopefully this will kind of encourage you to go through these more because it's really going to strengthen you as a 3D artist and make you more versatile. And honestly, I love procedural materials. I make them all the time. Uh, but with that being said, that's it. Uh, feel free to check out real-time materials that is in the description, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.